let's pick up where we left off. And we were discussing all of these fun things that happen with the red blood cells. The last thing that we talked about with the red blood cells was what can happen with this RH factor if the mother happens to be negative and the child happens to be positive and then what happens in the succeeding pregnancies, how the first one is okay, but after that, if we don't get the Rogan shot, then the succeeding pregnancies, it can be like the, the blood attacks the offspring. So now, as we move into our next topic, we're going to now head into our white blood cells, the leukocytes. As we head into the leukocytes, with the white blood cells, these are the least abundant element. Now, do you remember when we saw the picture of the test tube? The red blood cells, the white blood cells, the plasma. 45, 55, wait a minute. That's almost 100, right? These are making up less than 1% of the blood. So their numbers are not high at all. The norm should be anywhere from 5 to 10,000 white blood cells per microliter. But their job, huge. They protect against infectious microorganisms. What is that? Bacteria. Bacteria, viruses, parasites, lots of fun stuff, and other pathogens. Well, what could be another pathogen? Like what? Okay, because normally when we think about getting sick, we probably think about those bacteria we probably think about the viruses. The parasites might not come to mind, but they should. Well, I'm thinking more along the lines of cancers, blood diseases, other things that could be in the tissues of the body, okay? Uh, chemicals, for example, okay? So there's a lot of things that our body has to fight against that comes in and the body can hope, the, the hope is that the body recognizes it as the foreign material and that the body doesn't recognize itself as foreign and begins to attack it. They have a very conspicuous nucleus. Do you guys remember how I kind of pointed that out in the slides that I had out? They spend a few hours in the bloodstream and then they can migrate to connective tissue. They retain their organelles. They don't spit anything out because they might have to make something. So they're going to keep their cell parts. Remember how we mentioned that we had granulocytes and A granulocytes? The granules, all the white blood cells have granules. We termed them granulocytes or A granulocytes before we had microscopes strong enough to actually see it. So they have these lysosomes. Do you happen to remember what a lysosome is? Oh, that's very interesting. I have never heard it called that before. The trash can of the cell. <laughs> okay. Yeah. They eat up anything that has tried to invade. They eat up dead cell parts. Stuff that's been used and they need to make something new. So, 
we've got all these these lysosomes and they're non-specific or azurophilic. Now, for our granulocytes, some of those white blood cells, those granules get specific. Now, we're going to find that we have white blood cells that are going to have the same response every time they encounter an invader. It doesn't matter what it is. They have the same response. If that invasion can, can get past those white blood cells, the body has to now kick in these specific white blood cells. It's a totally different process. All right, it gets very complicated. So they're going to be able to do something that is very specific in the fight against whatever has tried to invade our bodies. Now, the white blood cells, other things that they're going to be able to do, they're going to be able to go into and remove, like, dead cells because, you know, cells, some of the cells of the body have a specific lifespan. So they can eat up the dead cells. They can clean up debris that might be in the tissues. We're going to see that with the white blood cells, when we look at that centrifuging that took place, that little area between the plasma and the red blood cells, that's the white blood cell, and we call it the Buffy coat. I'm not sure if you guys remember that, but it's called the Buffy coat. Now, one of the cool things about white blood cells is their movement. They have what's termed amoeboid movement. Do you know what an amoeba is? Have you ever seen one? Okay, looks like somebody took like some kind of gloppy stuff, threw it against the wall, and you just got all this stuff, okay? But what, the, what an amoeba is, it's a single cell organism, and the movement, the way, it do, the way that it moves, it'll push out part of its plasma membrane, so it'll kind of like push out that plasma membrane and pull the rest of its body in the direction that it's going to go. This is how those white blood cells move. Because they need to be able to move throughout the blood, but then the, cell, the white cells that can migrate out into the tissues, they need to be able to move in that extracellular fluid. Does that make sense? All right, so in the bloodstream, okay, the way that they're going to move, they'll be able to like move some of their plasma membrane and then pull the rest of the cell and move and pull the rest of the cell. And what it does is it allows for them to basically move and then especially if they migrate out of the bloodstream into the tissues. They can move through that extracellular fluid that's around the tissues, the cells. Anything they encounter, they can digest it. That's important. Okay? This is important for the maintenance of the tissue. Does that make sense? Because if we've got cells that have a specific lifespan and they're dying, we need to get rid of them. We can't just have them building up in those tissues. And we have the white blood cells that do this. But isn't it like so many cells that are dying and we all have to like blood cells that are 
their job that's their job they simply go around now some cells all right some cells when they die all right those lysosomes actually help to digest the cells yeah so it's a really cool process because think about it for example um intestinal cells they renew about every 24 hours we didn't have a way to get rid of all the old dead ones i mean that would be interesting i paid 10 bucks to see that you know so it would be this really bad situation so we have to you know we've got these cells that do that now because the white blood cells they can be in circulation and then they can move into the tissues that is going to be something called diapodesis okay your textbooks probably going to talk about that and that is simply the ability of these cells to move out of the blood circulation into the tissues and that's termed diapodesis something else that is very important with these white blood cells is chemotaxis now what does that term bring to mind okay you think you're thinking and and if you if that's what brings to mind what is that about what is the chem part what's the something of chemical chemotaxis chemicals Ah, that becomes extremely important when some of these white blood cells have to do their job. The chemicals, the chemicals that they can either release or the chemicals they can be attracted to. Hmm. Remember that because one of the things that happens when a blood vessel is broken it releases chemicals. Why does it release the chemicals? To attract the white blood cells and some of the other things that are needed to close up that vessel because if we didn't we bleed to death so that's why we don't bleed to death yes mm -hmm. people that these chemicals don't work correctly hemophilia for example blood blood clotting factors that's the reason they bleed out because they don't work the chemicals don't work now something else that's kind of cool about white blood cells if you get white blood cells um, the foreign particles the bacteria the dirt all of that stuff accumulate at the site where there's been a breach then you get that white stuff plus that's what that is isn't that kind of cool you know think about John Belushi and donuts that he put in his mouth and spit them out, you know, when he did that number. And he was like, What am I? I'm on zip. Yeah. Did y'all want to see him? Classic movie. Y'all ever come to my office, y'all are going to see that poster. You're going to see that in my office. Because, you know, it's like college. Yeah. It's so cool. Now, under the types of leukocytes, like we said, we have the granulocytes and we have the A 
granulocytes. For the granulocytes, neutrophils, eosinophils, basophils, neutro eo baso. Those are our granulos. A granulos, lymphos, monos. Now, neutrophils, 60 to 70 percent of white blood cell count are these. Polymorphonuclear. Many poly morpho shape. They got a cool looking nucleus when you look at them. Most it looks like most of the cell is this really cool looking nucleus. Eos, only about two to four percent are the of the white blood cells. Their nucleus, two lobes. Basos <clears throat> making up less than one percent. Large, abundant granules. Very when it says violet, they're very pretty. The color is very pretty. Now for the A granulocytes, the lymphos, 25 to 33 percent. So at this point, what is making up the majority of white blood cell count? The neutrophils, the lymphos. Now, monocytes, once again, small amount, but they're extremely large cells. And I'm talking large cells under the scope. Their um, nucleus, usually kind of kidney shaped. But what do each of these do? If we look at those granulocytes, the neutrophils. For the neutrophils, those nuclei, about two to five lobes of nuclei are present. These are aggressively antibacterial. What, what is it? Does that make you think about anything? So, why does it make you think about soap? 